Hey folks, welcome back to our ongoing coverage Origin Summer Preview 2017 with the Dice Tower. I'm Mark and I'm here with Kirk from Smirk and Dagger Games. Hey there. So tell us what you brought today. This is very cool. Yes, well thank you. Uh, so this is a prototype for the Tower of Madness. Tower of Madness. Tower of Madness. And obviously this is based on HP Lovecraft. Cthulhu. Yep. Got all the tentacles. Yep. And uh, essentially it is a push your luck dice game. Oh. Which just a, that's just the game right for yes, me. Yes, yep. and it's got a marble-filled tower here. Okay. Used as a punishment device <laughs> for doing your investigations poorly. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Right. So um, you're all investigators. You're investigating unspeakable horror without losing your marbles. All right. All right. So how does it work then? <laughs> uh, so um, you've got a, a series of encounters here, okay. that, you know, and these unspeakable horrors, and at each. Uh, each player is going to have to roll okay. to see how well they do at that uh, at that investigation. Every time you roll the dice, mm -hmm. you must use at least one of them and kind of lock them in. Okay. And it's important that Here. during during the course of your turn, mm -hmm. you must have a gate and then bring your heart and mind to it. I see. So you're going to need a one, two, and three. Gotcha. So I've just rolled a two and a three, so I'll go ahead and plug those in. Okay. That's great. I got a heart and mind. Now, I could plug in other dice, trying to get these two dice as high as I, as I can to be the best investigator. I hear you. But right okay. now, I really need to make sure I get the gate. So I keep on rolling and plugging in dice, hoping to get at least that. Well, I didn't get it. Didn't so get it. So I had to use something. So I'll put that in my investigation. Okay. Keep on hoping for the gate. There it is. All right. That's a successful investigation. Okay, good. Now, what that means is that I am not going to have to draw from the tower. If I was unable to complete this investigation... Right. I would have to now draw from the tower, and any marbles that fall affect my character immediately. <laughs> and they go in these slots down they here? They do, yeah. Okay. Now, there are four types of marbles in the tower. All right. Now, while it is, um, it's going to remind people of a game like Kerplunk. Okay, yes. It is not, in fact, Kerplunk. You are not trying to avoid drawing any tentacles. There's a reason why we're investigating. Okay. We actually want to make discoveries. Blue marbles are worth three points All right. when they fall out of the tower. So that's actually that's a, good a good thing. That's a good thing, right? right? Yeah. You start the game with spell cards, mm -hmm. but in order to get more, white marbles have to drop from the tower, okay. and you get one for each white marble that drops. However, while you are doing all of this, yeah. it comes at a risk. So, red marbles are madness. If you get four madness marbles, you give up all notions of trying to get points and all that sort of thing. You become insane and you join right. the game trying to bring about Cthulhu's rise. Uh, of course. You don't even roll dice anymore. You're just drawing from the tower <laughs> playing spells. Um, all in an effort to get the third Doom Marble to okay. draw. There are only three of these green marbles in the tower. All right. If the last one drops before they finish all their investigations, uh -huh. investigators all lose. Cthulhu rises. Game oh. over. End and, of everything. Right. And if you're insane, you're like, you know, yay! yay. Except you're also just eaten last. So well, it's a very hollow okay. victory. However, if you are the insane player that causes the drop of that last green marble, that's a win condition. Okay. You are raised as the exalted at that point. Nice. So um, this, uh, this game it does include spells, which both have a sane and an insane side, okay. depending on your current state. And all of the different locations, while they start with a clock tower which has no real ability, when you get into other ones, the abilities of these cards start to change, and it changes how you roll. So in okay. this case, uh, at the Overgrown Cemetery, mm -hmm. both of your discovery dice, these last two dice, yep. have to be of equal value or you fail. Uh, and other things like that. In this case, you know, if you roll double fours, they become wild. Okay. You know, different things. Now, in order to take over and be lead investigator at a uh, different location, you have to roll the highest you can in those last two dice. Okay. So 12 yeah, yeah. is the, without use of a spell card, the highest you can get. All right. So if you beat the last player um, or you tie them, you take over as lead investigator as it moves around the table. Oh, interesting. Okay. So whoever has, is the, the best investigator gets all the point values that uh, comes with the location. location. So 6, 10, ten. 9. Yeah. Nice. Uh, as well as all the discovery points in the marbles. Great. So this is a really exciting game. It's wonderful when you're like drawing and like the drawing tension like, of like, yeah. Don't want that last doom token. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but 
in essence, it truly is a push your luck dice game. Yeah. With this is more of a punishment this device. This is really cool. Yeah. Uh, that, this has been in development for three years. Okay. Um, and right now we are still trying to find out exactly what the MSRP is going to be. Okay. We, we don't know. All right. I want it. I want it to be a fifty dollar game. Yeah. But right now it's hovering at sixty, and I'm I'm still working with printers to okay. get it down lower. Down lower. But it's got so much in the box. It's got right. 36 marbles and plastic tentacles. Yeah, and it's, it's gonna be tough, crazy. Right? Yeah. Do you have like a potential release date? Yes. So we hope to have this game. Actually, I'm going to commit. We are going to okay. have this game by this time next year. All right. At this show. All right. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can we pull some tentacles? Oh, uh, uh, carefully. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do Actually, it. Actually, what you're going to do is you're going to hear. See, I, I heard one just heard move. Heard one move. Yeah. Right. What if we pull? But from... not not everything is going to drop something. Oh, nothing yeah. dropped. I really so want the, to your, drop. Fir your, fir your first pulls are... Oh, oh, oh there all right, so there's a spell. spell That's right? a good thing. That's a good thing. So I now get a new spell card. Okay. Keep on drawing. All right. Oh, you got oh, a clean one. Oh, I got a clean one. Up top. No. No. I'm going to do from down here. Oh, 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 what do we get? Oh, that's three. That's yeah. nine points. Let's look at that. See? See? I'm just dropping the mic right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kurt, thanks for joining us today. I you appreciate bet. it. All right, folks, stay tuned for more coverage. This to you. Okay. Hello, Kurt. How are yeah. you? Oh, I just, oh, I'm losing my You just got a couple spells. And, uh, <laughs> so let's, let's talk about, um, well, yes. about the materials that you're expecting this to be made of. What are the tentacles made of? So we have gone back and forth mm -hmm. on, on that exact question. Um, and it all comes down to what do we want the price of the game to be? Yeah. I had looked at creating these tentacles as three-dimensional molded plastic. Yep. And that would have caused the game to be $100. Oh, okay. So I said no. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, okay. Right now, um, I am looking for these uh, to be made out of plastic with uh, decals both sides that'll be applied at the factory. Okay. And they'll be about the same, these are a little bit too thick. It'll be the same width of, as that skewer. You just got another spell. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be the same width of that as that skewer, um, but it's basically gonna look just like this. Is okay, the all right. Um, I also looked at making them cardboard. Now, really, really thick, like three millimeter, like, Chunky, right. chunky cardboard. Yeah. Um, but I was a little concerned about humidity. A little concerned about over time some breakage or bending. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a really thick cardboard, so it should be fine. Mm -hmm. But you just never know. Okay. So so uh, this is still in flux. You're not not quite sure where this is going to be. I am trying to beat up um, printers and find the right partner to get the right price so okay. uh, you know again I, I would love to bring this in for 50 and right now I can't right right now it's at 60 but I would love to knock you know, knock that extra yeah. 10 bucks off but you know we're looking at like this this base that you're looking at right here yep uh, this is also going to be plastic not blow molded to be a real plastic it needs that weight on the base to right. be stable mm -hmm. uh, the dice are going to be uh, custom molded it's got 36 marbles in there. Uh, the tower itself is going to be constructed of actual uh, like board game, you know, like board material. Okay. Uh, and it should be hinged on all sides. If not, we'll go with e-flute, which is what this prototype is made out of. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's quite an exciting project, which is why it's been like three years in development. Right. Are you expecting to be able to disassemble it completely and put it flat in the box? We are also looking at that. Okay. I, we're looking at a box size that hopefully would be like 11, and, 11, 11 by three and a quarter, which which case it'd be you could keep the tower basically together without unfolding. Okay. It. So you'll take the tower off the base and put it down. Yeah. Tentacles go on a little tray. Exactly. And, okay. Um, if not, then this might have a Velcro closure to the tower, hmm. so you can assemble it. Okay. You know, together. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, are you looking to kickstart it, or is it going straight to retail? I am planning to go straight to retail with okay. this. Um, however, I am going to have the uh, the pre-order in the system very early because I want to make sure that when this releases, people are not put on allocations. Okay. So I want to make sure that um, I'm going to have a, a, a very long lead time. I think I'll start soliciting um, probably the end of this year and know that it's not going to really be out in the marketplace 
probably until this time next year. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll have games. I'm going to be sending them out to reviewers so we'll get early looks, right. um, early thoughts on the game. Mm -hmm. And um, retailers will also have a first opportunity to have a demo copy. Right, so, yeah. So all of that is hopefully going to like make sure there are enough, enough units right when we launch. Uh, people are asking about how you set it up. So I've, I've taken it out of the box, I've got the tower on the thing, yeah. and I stick the tentacles in, Yes. and then do I just dump all the marbles you do. in? You, you, dump, you dump them all in, and um, now there are tentacles missing, so this is going to be, but what you do is to make sure that the marbles are distributed through, you just shake it left or right, up and down just a little bit okay. until one marble drops, and then you know that they're percolated through. Okay. Um, also, you'll notice that uh, there every other tentacle goes yep. into the tower, so they're all marked with like a green circle oh, to tell yeah, you, okay. here's yes. the one that goes in here. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and then you sort of aim for a non-green hole uh, it, to stick it through. It's, it's opposite side. Okay. So it's always opposite side, and I'll actually have like a, a matching color on the inside to help guide you. Okay. Now there is some setup. It takes like, you know, Yeah. when you, when you pull it out of the box and, and set it up, it's probably gonna take you like 10 minutes to set up before okay. anyone can, you know, but All right. it's it's totally worth it. And, and the tension of when you're like, you're like, uh, what's gonna come out? You got another spell. Right, but it's all, that was all good stuff. Yeah. Just like in our demo. There's far more madness still in there. Oh, there's a lot of madness. And honestly, <laughs> I love I love games where it, there's player transformation rather than player elimination. Oh uh, yeah. And so that's been a recurring theme in a lot of my games now. And again with this game, if you go insane, you're not out of the game. You're an active participant, but your your game completely changes. That's, yeah. You're no longer rolling dice. You are playing spells and just pulling tentacles out, um, hoping to drop that last green marble. And it's now fun to play spells that are intended uh, instead of helping you. Now you're like oh. Yeah, the heart that you rolled, roll it again, and I hope you get it again, because otherwise you're drawn from the tower. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's move on to your evergreen title, Cutthroat Caverns. Oh, yes. Uh, you've announced an expansion. Yes. Now, with that announcement, are you planning a reprint of the base game, or even the big box what version? What a good question. Is that a good question? Yeah. Um, Is there so a good answer for that? There's question? an excellent answer yes. for that. I have a lot of Cutthroat Cavern news. Okay. Uh, so the first thing is that, yes, Cutthroat Caverns will be delivering Expansion 5, Death Incarnate, and that will be at Gen Con. Okay. Um, we are going to be, as part of that expansion, you're going to see some of the graphics updated. Um, we looked at the game, after, you know, it's been out for about 10 years yeah, now, yeah. so... Some of that art looks about 10 years old, okay. the graphic design, and it really needed some refreshing. So we are also going to, for the 10th anniversary, reboot the base game. Okay. Um, and it's going to be an art refresh, a graphic layout refresh. Um, we're tweaking maybe just a couple of the, the encounters to increase the life points because that first set was a little bit weaker. Okay. Um, but by and large, same game, but just a nicer look. Now, that look is being introduced in the fifth expansion. Okay. Um, and that fifth expansion is all dedicated to, like, the most interesting encounters that we've ever had, which are the incarnations. And all the relics, all the events, all the creatures are all incarnation-based. Okay. So it's going to make... I honestly think it is the best expansion we've had since, like, number two, which was a, a, a milestone for us. Okay. Uh, now, will you still be able to play fifth expansion with all the previous Absolutely, sets? yes. No. Okay. So all the backs are common. Okay. They're not changing. Good. It's just a graphic update on the face of the card. Okay. And eventually, we will... All of the current uh, content will be... The next time we have to hit reprint will be updated. Updating in the new design That's on the right. front of the card. Yeah. Excellent. Um, the other thing to say, and this is kind of also very new news, um, Cutthroat Caverns app is back on. Okay. So I am working with a developer right now to, uh, and we should have, fingers crossed, a beta available to look at at our Gen Con booth. Wow. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be maybe like one encounter, the Ripper, to, to okay. see how it's going to work. Right. But it is intended to be a um, a solo play game with three, sorry, six different AI players that are all programmed to behave like different personalities that you oh encounter boy. at the table. Okay. So you're yep. going to have a player that is programmed to be tit for tat. 
you know, you did something you to me, me, I'm, I'm targeting you. you, right? It's all stuff we see at the table yeah. all the time. Another one is going to be just like, you know, no, I, I walked in this room with a grudge and you're it. Yeah. Uh, another one is uh, largely a helpful player, one who's like the peacemaker. Yeah. Um, so all kinds of different play styles. Um, and it was important to do it as a solo game. One, because I think a lot of apps, that's what people, you know, if they don't have someone to sit down and play with, they like to play, you know, uh, against an AI if it's a smart one. The other thing is that because there's so many opportunities for interrupts through that game, it was almost impossible to make it live against another networked player. Right. Yeah. Because the lag time would have killed the enjoyment yeah. of the game. And even a pass and play, you have give me the iPad. Yeah. I want to do something to yeah. you right now. So okay. so that was really the reason for the direction we did. So you'll always have um, three AI opponents out of the six randomly sorted. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have to move on. Uh, All right. If people want more information about this and any of the Smirk and Dagger games, where do they go? Uh, they go to smirkanddagger.com or they can follow us on Facebook. It's Smirk Ampersand Dagger. Perfect. Kurt, thank you very much. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you for your questions. More very soon. <laughs>